So we have a whole bunch of graphs to choose from here, and they could be position versus time, velocity versus time, or acceleration versus time. But in all instances, these are supposed to be the time axes. Okay, so the first one says acceleration versus time for a cart moving at a steady rate on a horizontal track. So steady rate means that we've got a constant speed. So a constant speed means that the velocity isn't changing, and so that means an acceleration equal to zero. So in that case, none of these show a plot of something that just has a value of zero. Okay, so part B is velocity versus time. So now we're looking at velocity for a ball that's dropped until it lands on the sidewalk. Okay, so it's dropped. That means it starts from rest and then it speeds up. Speeds up. Typically it's getting a more negative value, but because it's falling due to gravity, that's a constant acceleration. Constant acceleration. So that means a constant slope. And so if I'm looking at this, the one that I would see that does that is G. Notice that starts at zero and has a constant slope. You could also argue H and say that down was my positive direction. So either of those I would have accepted as answers. Okay, velocity versus time. Okay, so we're still velocity. For a cart on a track, after it's given a push, goes out, turn, goes out and turns around. Okay, so the path of this is just it goes out and comes back around, either that direction or from the other direction, left to right, right to left. So at this point, that is a velocity equal to zero at the turnaround point. So I'm looking for something where I've got a zero. And the other thing is, if we have a fan providing a constant acceleration, that means again a constant slope. And so that's going to mean for this one that I would be looking at something like C, where I've got it crossing zero, or D, either one. Usually the first direction it goes is recorded as the positive direction and then it turns around goes negative, but you could say it started going negative and then turned around and went positive either way. So C, C, or D. Some people wanted to answer, for example, B as the question, and B would be the position versus time. So if you wanted position versus time, B is your position versus time. And similarly for this one, for velocity versus time for this, notice that A would be your position versus time if you wanted that one. Okay, so for this next one, we're asked to find the x and y components. So the x component, it's four units, one, two, three, four. The y is two units, one, two. Um, then the magnitude, that's how long this vector is. So we've got something that's four and two. And the question is, What's this sign? Usually the hypotenuse is what we call that, so I'll just label it as h. And so h is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. And when I calculate that out, I get about 4.5 units, whatever these units are. To find the angle, you can find whatever angle as long as you label it. So if we're finding that angle, I would say tangent of theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. 2 over 4, or theta is equal to the arc tangent, and your calculator is tangent to the minus 1 of 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 27 degrees. Okay, we have a ball projected up in the air at an angle of 60 degrees. Okay, so 
60 degrees um, with a speed of 20 meters per second. And it takes this many seconds to reach its highest point. Okay, so it goes up there. That's the highest point. Y final, maybe. And we have the time for that, and we use this for our acceleration due to gravity. That would be in the y direction. So typically, I would say for the positive direction for x, I would say that would be to the right. And typically, I would use up for that. If I say up is positive, then my acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. If you use a plus sign in this box for the acceleration of the y, then you must be saying that your positive um, y is down. Okay, my initial position, I'm going to go ahead and say that we start at 0, 0, because why not? You can pick whatever value you want there. It's impossible to get that one. Well, not quite impossible, but you, you, uh, you, you can pick whatever you want as long as you're consistent the rest of the problem through. And then um, for uh, the x initial velocity, if this is 60 degrees here and we have 20 meters a second, so this is 20 meters a second, and this is 60, then this, the x, the initial and the x, the initial y, sorry, this is labeled initial, or it could have been the zero x, then we say cosine of 60 degrees is equal to the initial x over 20 meters per second. And so this is 20 times cosine of 60 degrees meters per second. And this is 20 times the sine of 60 degrees in meters per second. And so this is 17.3 meters per second. And this is 10 meters per second. And there is no acceleration in the x direction. Um, and then we have the time. The time is 1.77 seconds. Same here. To the peak. And so it asks, the first question is, how high does it go? So of your equations for constant acceleration, y is equal to y initial plus v initial in the y direction, t plus 1 half a y t squared. You can use this as an I, which is what we're using some of the time. Then we just plug our values in. Well, our y initial is equal to 0. That's equal to 17.3 meters per second. The time is 1.77 seconds plus 1 half times a minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 1.77 seconds squared is equal to y. And when you plug those in, I get a value of, I'll write out, 30.6 meters minus 15.4 or so meters, 35 actually. And this gives me um, uh, 15.3 or so. I'll do this. Well, 15.2 um, in this case, once we've rounded it. 15.2, 15.3. Okay, the second part of this, well, the third part of this, what's its velocity and that is speed and direction at the top? Well, at the top, right, it's doing this kind of thing. It still has a velocity in the x direction, but vy V watt, huh? Wow. <laughs> Vy is equal to zero at the top, right? Because it's turning around. It's going up and then down. So you can just say it's equal to Vx, but if there's no acceleration, that has to be the same as the initial velocity. So that would be 10 meters a second. So the velocity at the top is 10 meters per second in the i hat direction plus zero in the j hat direction. So the acceleration, acceleration at the top, well, it's zero in the x, zero i hat, minus 9.8 meters per second squared in the j hat direction. There's still acceleration. Gravity is still working, so, and it's still pointing down. There's still no acceleration horizontal.